Hello friends, welcome back to the automotive basic session. This is Soma Shekhar. In previous video, we have discussed three properties of the CAN protocol. Now I am going to describe you remaining six properties of the CAN protocol. Okay, let's begin with our four proper fourth property of the CAN protocol. What it says, multicast cast reception with time synchronization. What does it mean? That means messages will be broadcasted over the CAN bus based on system design. Nodes will decide act on it or not. We will see with the animated example. Here you can see that the transmitting node is going to broadcast its message over the CAN bus. Receiving node will receive the message and check the same whether the message belongs to them or not. If the message belongs to them, they will act on it, else it will be discarded. Discarded. You can see the same with an example. The TX node is going to broadcast its message over the network. What receivers will do? So the receiver is going to act on the message. This is the short note about this property. Now, the fifth property of the CAN protocol is system wide data consistency. What does it mean? Here, the TX node, you can see in the picture, the TX node transmits its message over the bus. Receivers checks the message and if they found that the transmitted message is corrupted they will send an error frame you can see in this picture so all the four receivers are replaying the transmitting node by sending their error frames so every bus node is informed about an error due to this destroyed message will be retransmitted again until it's successful, thus data consistency is maintained in a CAN network. The next property of the CAN protocol is multi-master. What does it mean? In a CAN network, multiple nodes will attempt to gain the bus success, but the node with high priority message will win the bus and gains the bus success for its message transmission. Here you can see the ECU2 will be the master. I'll describe you how the ECU2 will become master in this network. You can see the multiple nodes are trying to gain the bus access to transmit its message, but the ECU6 and 4 will lose the arbitration and they'll not get any chance for its message transmission. You can see here multiple nodes attempts to gain the bus access but the node with i priority message wins the bus and became master so the ecu 4 and 6 has to try next time that's the reason ecu 4 and 6 lost arbitration due to low priority message so here in this network our ecu 2 is the master so this says that CAN is not a master-slave architecture. You can see the short nodes, the multiple nodes can attempt to gain the bus access. The node with high priority message wins the arbitration. The node which wins the arbitration will be the master and gets the bus access for its message transmission. So the next property of the CAN protocol is error detection and signaling. What it what does it mean? Error detection and signaling means in a CAN network any node can detect an error in the trans detect an error in the transmitted message and they can inform about the same by sending an error frame. Now you can see the same with the animated example. Here, the node A is the transmitting node. It's going to broadcast its message over the CAN network. So, 
so the node a sends message to node b what node b will do it now so the node b is going to replay the node a like this node b found an error in the message so node b will send an error frame to inform the node a so the error frame you can see the node b yeah, the error frame is sent by the node b what is the next property of the can protocol is automatic transmission of corrupted messages as soon as the bus is idle again within a can network corrupted messages will be retransmitted automatically automatically in previous property you have seen that any node in a can can detect the error in the transmitted message and they can inform about the same we have discussed but here one step ahead you can see in the illustration the node a is going to broadcast its message over the can bus but the node b finds an error in the transmitted message and it will send an error frame but of following the error error frame the node a has to retransmit its message you can see here the node a is retransmitting its message to node b once again the last property of the can protocol is distinction between the temporary error and permanent failure of nodes and autonomous switching off of defect nodes so here i have a can network what it does in can temporary and permanent errors are distinguished with the help of error counters and hardware failures so what is error counter we will see in upcoming videos for time being let me explain you what is error counter here here the ecu one is in temporary error state what is temporary error state the temporary error state means the node is not in a active state that means the tec and rec counter values are equal to greater than 127 that's the reason if the tec and rec error counters are greater than 127 the node will be in passive error state this can be recovered by reinitialization of the ecu but what does what do you mean by permanent failure of node means there is some hardware issues in the network so this node has to be replaced uh, hardware uh, sorry hardware issues in the network or ecu so in that case the node has to be replaced with a newer one then only it can be solved so this is the ninth property of the can protocol you can see in the figure the node is not able to perform its intended functions due to hardware issues that's the reason this node has to be replaced with newer one so conclusion so far in part 2 and part 3 videos we have learned properties of can protocol anyway for queries please leave comments below if you enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel secrets of automotive industry and hit thumbs up thank you guys